Hi, I'm Annie. I would like to share a story with you about a single mother whose daughter was trafficked at the very young age of 16. She was convinced to leave her home, abandoned in the middle of nowhere, raped and abused repeatedly. It's been two years since she's been rescued and still suffers from post-traumatic stress syndrome. She's left now without feeling like she has a future, but she does. Human trafficking is currently the second largest criminal enterprise in the world, just under drugs and weapons. Tonight, an eye-opening investigation into human trafficking during one of Detroit's most popular events. Her pimps use drugs and beatings as a way to control her. New details on a human trafficking bust that put eight people behind bars right here in the Alamo City. Many victims of sex trafficking fear explaining the horror of their experience. With 100,000 to 300,000 children within the United States being exploited each year, human trafficking is a form of modern day slavery that occurs in every state, including yours. There are certain things I had expectations of before she can have extra privileges. And that was, you know, even through schooling, being respectful to myself as well as her siblings. Both obviously were not compromising and being flexible as far as what she can and cannot do. She had lied to me on a Sunday saying she had spent the night at a friend's house. She had come home and I caught her. She was somewhere down south. I had taken her phone away. I had taken her the door off her hinges of her bedroom. I had taken all electronics out of her room. Um, she just had her clothes, her makeup, her bed, and that was it. I got out for work the next morning and I checked her bedroom and she wasn't there. I contacted the school to see if she actually went to school and she didn't. Um, my next step was to contact the police and report her as missing, fill out the police report. I showed him her phone. I had went through her history. It was not good. It definitely said um, trafficking. She had befriended a certain person. The certain person was in the military after I found out I was doing my own research. And they befriended my daughter several months prior and had lengthy conversations um, more so of why I'm a strict parent and I don't allow certain things and they pretty much talked her into leaving my home. It wasn't the actual PIMB or organization that took her from the house. It was the spotter picked them up from the school and they had left all their belongings in a trunk. The spotter had drove them to a location, um, told them to use a restroom, and dropped him off. That's when the pimps went up to you know, my daughter saying, do you need help? Do you need money? You know, you look like you're lost. Do you need to go somewhere? Do you, what do you need? Right? Why not go with them? Since she's very close to family, I'm thinking that she's gonna reach out, which she never did. That's when I knew after a couple of days, I knew something was wrong. I started going to social media and I had put up a picture of her asking for help to see if anybody has seen her and still nothing, even though her photo was shared all over the place, including nationwide. Somebody had mentioned to me when I had mentioned trafficking, they said that there is a certain, a certain website that people 
put these miners on. I went through so many ads that were disgusting. And at about 12.52, I remember, <laughs> I saw pictures of her. The way I identified her is by her body and her undergarments. I immediately contacted the FBI. I sent over all the screenshots I took of the ad and they said that they were going to get it um, in their system and that somebody would contact me. An FBI agent contacts me and says that she's an advocate and that they are going to be trying to recover my child. I ended up going down to the area where the area code was. Two or three hours goes by and she's like, okay, we're close. We're close on recovery. And I said, okay, you know, I'm, I'm st still sitting here waiting. 10.30 hits and I get a phone call from the detective not from the FBI agent. And he said, I'm really sorry, but we're not able to get her tonight, but we're gonna have to do it tomorrow. At, at that point, I lost it. I said, I can't wait. And I said, again, what happens if we can't get her tomorrow? And he's like, we will definitely keep on trying but at some point we'll have to stop. I fell to the ground. I literally had to be picked up and lifted to put back in the car. And I got a phone call that morning from the FBI agent saying that we're trying our best. We now have 50 task force involved. We have two counties of detectives on the case. We have undercover. We have people on foot. At 5.30 that evening, I finally got a phone call from an officer saying that we have located her and we have her in our custody. I got a phone call from a private name, private number. I answer it and it's my daughter. And she she said, Mommy, I'm safe. I'm safe now. And I talked to her for almost an hour and a half. And she kind of told me some things that had happened and that she was thankful that um, they rescued her when they did because after her story hit the news, she overheard um, the bad people were going to sell her on Sunday. She was very paranoid, very scared because they knew where we lived. They knew where she went to school. They knew she had siblings. I mean, these people ripped the purity out of my daughter. She slept with me for four months. She had night tremors, nightmares. I would wake up with her in the middle of the night. The only thing that I think was keeping her mind off of everything was focusing on school. And one thing I wanted her to do for herself, let alone to make me proud, was to graduate on time. And she did just that. Is she gonna go to college? She wants to. Um, unfortunately, financially, we can't. Thank you for trusting me to come meet with me today. And I know that's not easy, but you're gonna learn to trust again, but to the right people. I'm a firm believer of looking at goals and looking towards the future. We can't change your past. So your mother told me that you have some really big goals. 
and that you want to go to school. I think that would be really a positive thing for you. And I hardly even know you, and I feel like my heart's already so open to you. So we want you to go to school, okay, honey? And I want you to look for your future, and we've been raising money for you. And I think we have enough to at least send you, at least for the good first half of the year to not the first full year. So it's going to be fully paid for. Give you something to look forward to, right? And you can focus on just being a kid. You're just a kid. You have so much life still in you, honey. Nobody deserves to steal that and rob that from you. And I'm gonna give you, your mom my cell phone number if you ever just wanna talk or you want me to come have lunch with you or just come hang out with girl time. So will you accept that gift? Yes. Thank you. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. You have no idea how much this helps. I can't thank you enough, Annie. That was what I've been holding in. You get to go to school. If you suspect someone being trafficked or in any kind of danger, please call 911 immediately. If you have any information regards to a potential trafficking situation, you can call the National Human Trafficking Hotline 24-7 Toll free at 1-888-373-7888. Three, three, seven, eight, eight, eight. All reports are confidential and you can remain anonymous. If you want to make a difference right now, please click on the link below to contribute to Hope's College Fund to help this young girl focus on her future. Talk It Up TV is a nonprofit organization and we rely on your help to make stories like this happen. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, don't be silent, be brave. I'll see you next time.